All right, here is another free fall problem, one that might be a little more complicated. We imagine that we're standing here on the ground and we're throwing a baseball into the air at 40 meters per second. So right off the bat, we know the initial velocity of the ball, we always like to make the initial velocity positive, is 40 meters per second. So the ball is going up, but remember that gravity is causing things to accelerate downward always. So we always wanna start by writing down VI and A so if VI is 40, the acceleration's in the opposite direction, so it must be negative 10 meters per second squared. And what it's trying to find is how high above the ground it'll be at its apex. So height is a distance, and delta x is the only one that measures a distance. So ultimately, we're looking for delta x. Now it's apex. Apex just means its highest point. Um, if you think about it in other terms, an apex predator is a predator who has no... You know, it's at the top of the food chain, it's the height of it. So apex means the highest point. So this ball is gonna go up into the air and then fall back down. I wanna know when it reaches this highest point, how high above the ground is it? So what do we know about it at its highest point? Well, as it goes up in the air, it's gonna slow down. And at the highest point, it briefly is gonna have a velocity of zero because that's when it's gonna turn around and start falling. So that's really where we're interested. So we're gonna say VF is zero meters per second, in other words, the part we're analyzing is from when we first throw it to when it reaches its apex. So at the apex, big idea is that the velocity is zero meters per second. So the big thing we have to find is time. How much time does it take to go from when it was thrown to when it reaches its apex? So you could use this equation and solve for time. So we know the final velocity is zero, the initial velocity is 40, and we know the acceleration is 10. So you could just plug in and solve for time here, but you might also be able to figure this out. It's a simple enough number that if you're starting at 40 meters per second, one second later, you're going 30 and then 20 and then 10, and then you'll be at zero after four seconds, right? So that's generally the idea is every second you lose 10. So in four seconds, you'll be able to go from 40 to zero. But you can find that here, solving this equation as well. So anyway, that's the key thing, is finding the time. Once you find the time, we're trying to find the height, delta x. We can just plug into this equation right here, which we use a lot. So we say that delta x equals vi times t. In this case, vi is 40. t, we just figured out, was 4. Plus 1 half times a, which is negative 10, times t squared, 4 squared. So 40 times 4 is 160. And then 4 squared is 16 times 10 is 160 times 1 half. It ends up being minus 80. Bottom line is we get delta x equals 80. And that is the height above where it was thrown from. That's our final answer. If we want to check our work, we can also say what is the average velocity. If you start at 40 and finish at 0, the average of that is 20 meters per second. And if you imagine going 20 for 4 seconds, you can see how you would get 80. So that's another way to double check your work. But anyway, the key thing here is realizing that at the apex, the velocity is zero and using that information to find the time. And once you have the time, everything else kind of gets unlocked. You can use this equation to find the distance. So this is a little trickier than some other ones. So I wanted to make sure I went through it. So give that a shot and that's it. Until next time, I am Derek Sanova. Have a delightful day.